there was a debate that broke out. You guys know I am a big person. <laughs> That's actually quite ironic considering what we're about to talk about. But I am big on speaking to people about the dangers of fat acceptance. It is why I routinely cover Lizzo. And I am very adamant about the fact that people that purport to be her fans and applaud her clinical obesity, right, actually hate her. They want her to die. I don't want Lizzo to die. So I tell her that she's clinically obese on the show. I don't know her personally. You're clinically obese and you should lose weight. That is the right thing to do. It is a good thing to feel shame. Calling it fat shaming means nothing to me, right? When you feel ashamed, you change your circumstances and you change yourself. When you feel no shame, there is no desire to make any changes. And worse than that, if you don't even feel shame, but instead you're being applauded and given Netflix documentaries like Lizzo did, this one's for the big girls about a dance, you know, girl, big girls that dance on stage, it's nearly impossible for you to get better because there's no incentive for you to get better. So I'm a big, I'm big on fat shaming, as they call it. I like shame. It transforms humans. Well, now, of course, this movement of fat acceptance is all across social media. And there is this woman who is, I guess, a fat representative. I don't know what to call them anymore, a fat influencer. So her name is Samira Miller. She's got 1.5 million followers, by the way. So there is, yeah, definitely a following for being openly fat. And she essentially posts a video of her asking for the seatbelt extender. And people in the comments basically said, some of them at least, this is not good. This is not healthy, I presume people told her. And some people said that Black, fat people shouldn't even be allowed to fly, I guess. And I, I think what they're actually trying to get at, something that I've discussed before, is that it does seem to me to be a little ridiculous that if you are a skinny person and you have luggage and it's, I don't know, one pound over, right? Let's say you're me and I put my suitcase up on the scale and it's one pound over, they're going to tell me you got to pay an extra $50. But if you're a fat person and you weigh 400 pounds, and you are allowed, not only allowed to fly, you're given a seatbelt extender. So you're given more from the airline than, and, and it's like, can you change your weight? Absolutely, right? I hate when people pretend that people get to 400 pounds because they have some illness and it requires them to sit down and eat McDonald's. I mean, the amount of food that you have to be consuming to get to 400 pounds is ridiculous, okay? So stop the, well, maybe they're sick. I know they're sick. If you are that clinically obese, you must also have some ailments that come along with it, which is why I want to encourage you to get thinner. So she was upset that some people didn't find her seatbelt extending video to be motivational. And she then decided to give a sermon, an empowered sermon, a big girl sermon. Where are my big girls at? Because she is about to tell you what you do and do not deserve. Take a listen. Apparently, there's a lot of things that fat people don't deserve. According to this person, uh, we don't deserve to fly. According to some clothing brands, designers, we don't deserve to have clothes, to model clothes. According to some popular dating shows, we don't deserve to find love. And according to a lot of people, we don't deserve to eat either. I can tell you what we do deserve. We deserve humanity. And the video that this comment is on, the video of me asking for a belt extender, the comments are full of vicious attempts to strip me of my humanity. So there you have it. I guess you're supposed to listen to that and say, oh my gosh, that's amazing. Yeah, you go, girl. No one should ever tell you that you don't deserve, which I highly doubt that somebody told her that she doesn't deserve to eat. Everybody deserves to eat. They probably told her that she should eat healthier. They probably told her that she should lose weight. They are probably telling her that if you're a person and you're my size and you're on the plane, you've got a huge person next to you. I, I have spoken about the time that I was on a plane and the flight attendant asked me to lift up my little arm side because they wanted to let the fat person be able to spill into my seat. Those seats are very expensive. That is not actually fair. And yet you have women like her who are on the internet that can garner millions of followers by saying, don't only be fat, but be unashamed in your fatness. Be unabashedly fat. Nobody cares, right? This is going to be a great thing. We're supposed to celebrate these things. No, we should not celebrate people killing themselves slowly. I can't say that enough. She's talking about wanting us to be more humane toward fat people. And this is about as humane as I can get, okay? 
If you are so big that you require a seat belt extender, you need to make changes in your life. I mean that sincerely, okay? My father just lost about 80 to 100 pounds. He needed to make changes in his life. I didn't say to him, let me encourage you there. Can you get bigger, dad? Can you become 500 pounds, 100 pounds? No, you need to make real life changes or else you are gonna suffer the consequences. And as it turns out, the consequence for being unabashedly fat is an early death. The number one killer in America is and remains obesity. Not COVID, not mean tweets on the internet, but obesity, which drives heart disease. So there you have it. I care about you and I'm super humane, so don't be unabashedly fat. All right, guys, the next portion of the show is going to be available exclusively on Daily Wire Plus. I'm going to be reading your comments, more of them, and answering your questions. So if you're not a member yet, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and click the link in the description and subscribe right now.